Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the famous cause and effect analysis, which is also known as the fishbone or Ishikawa, named after the person who introduced it back in the 1960s. If you are a problem solver, if you deal with data, then it is very, very important for you to know about the cause and effect analysis. It's called a fishbone because the way you represent it, it resembles the skeleton of a fish. So what you do here is that you list down the effect or the outcome, mostly an unfavorable outcome as the head. And you use these bones essentially to list down the causes that would lead to that poor outcome. So this is kind of an output and these are the inputs. The way we control an effect is by first controlling the causes that lead to that effect. That's the whole philosophy. Now to make it easy for people to remember it, they have given some broad headers for the causes. And these are mostly applicable in almost all these scenarios. So this is called a 6M approach. What are these? It could be the man issue. When I say man, it doesn't have to do anything with the gender. It's just an easy way to remember because it goes along with the other Ms. But the point here is that it could be a human factor. So let's say we are talking about a customer being not happy. You know, there could be customer service issues where there are individuals involved in the service and they didn't do something right that led to a poor experience. It could be the method. At times, the business processes are so complex that somewhere we leave the customer interest behind and that could lead to a poor experience. So it could be a method issue. It could be a machine issue. In scenarios where dealing with products which are being produced using certain machines, if the machine's worn out, then obviously it would lead to a poor quality product. It could be a material issue. So you may have everything in place. You may have the best manpower. You may have the right methods. You may have the best machines which are well maintained. Still, if the raw material itself that is being used to produce a product is poor quality, you're going to get a bad experience. Maybe while planning for business, planning relative to supply and demand itself was flawed, which leads to delay in dispatching something to the customer, which could be a measurement opportunity. And lastly, if we leave everything aside, there could be factors which are beyond our control. It could be environmental factors. We list them under mother nature. Let's say because of the environmental conditions, the customer couldn't really receive the order, and that is a poor effect. Let's talk about this through a very relevant example in today's times. These days, we all use these food delivery apps to order food. Those tempting ads follow us everywhere, and we end up ordering food every now and then from these apps. Let's say the food delivery app is facing a challenge that their customers are not giving them very positive ratings, and they want to find out why the customers are mostly not happy. Let's list causes under each of these categories. For example's sake, I will just do one cause under each category, but you can always do multiple causes. So let's say the customer is unhappy. It could be because the delivery person did not follow the protocol. Let's say the delivery person was supposed to leave the package at your doorstep and step behind, but the delivery person actually left the package with the security, didn't really reach your doorstep, didn't try to contact you. That's a man issue. Second, method. The packaging process itself. So normally these food delivery apps would give very clear guidelines to the restaurants to package food properly. Nobody likes to get a package which is all messed up. But if the packaging process was not followed, then it is a method issue. Next is machine. In earlier times, machines mostly referred to the hardware because we were talking about the products being produced. In these times, machines can also accommodate things like softwares. For example, if your app has an issue, app delayed the notification to the restaurant. As a result, the restaurant started preparing your food later. Or let's say the same notification delay happened with the delivery partner. So the person who was supposed to deliver your food got the notification with a lag. And as a result, end of the day, the customer is suffering. It could also be a material issue, which is the food quality, the taste, the ingredients. If there is any inconsistency here and if the customer has been routinely ordering food from the same restaurant, the customer would be able to identify that and it would lead to a poor rating. Under the measurement, we are talking about the turnaround time calculation. What is this? So whenever you're ordering food online, you often see an estimated time of delivery. Let's say it will be delivered in less than 30 minutes. Now, it has a number of factors baked in. Number one, how long would the restaurant take to prepare the food? Number two, how long would the delivery partner take to reach the restaurant to pick up your order? And from the restaurant, how long would the delivery partner take to reach your place? It has a number of assumptions underneath. 
And if we go wrong with our calculations, then the estimated time of delivery that was shown at the time of placing the order might not be the actual time taken to deliver the order and the customer may not appreciate the delay. Similarly, it could be the mother nature. Let's say everything was on track, but suddenly the weather changed. It started raining. As a result, the person who left the restaurant to deliver your order was stuck in traffic and your order delayed and that leads to poor experience. So with this example, I hope you understand in relatable terms that cause and effect analysis is valid for any scenario. When you're facing a problem, with the help of the subject matter experts, you can actually list down the potential causes. And in fact, this is the backbone of the modern day supervised machine learning. All you're trying to do in all the machine learning endeavors is that you have an outcome of interest and you're mapping it to certain causes or explanatory factors. Cause and effect analysis is a good starting point when you don't have the data to begin with and you want to start solving a problem from scratch. I hope this video helped you. And if, if this had some amount of learning for you, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with others and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.